One, when I got involved in politics. Two, as a citizen of this great city. And three, as a woman who has grown up in Baltimore, but also has raised my children in Baltimore. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to call Baltimore my home. For me, Baltimore is my city, the place where I raised my children, attended Baltimore City Public Schools, began my political career. I've watched progress to revitalize neighborhoods in ways it seems as if I witnessed the resurrection of dreams deferred for decades. Yet we still have a long way to go. We are Baltimore. For the last three consecutive years, we've surpassed 300 homicides, each victim with a name, a childhood, a loved one, a neighborhood they identified with, and somewhere along the way, they interacted with an institution that helped shape who they were. I read a story about a homicide victim, number 289, written through the eyes of his heartbroken aunt. Victim 289 was Antoine Lamont Bond, a 26-year-old in Park Heights. This one line spoke to me in her narrative. The truth of the matter is, Lamont did the best with what he was given, what Baltimore gave him. What did Baltimore give Lamont? And why do we keep falling short for our youth? Although I understand the tension and the frustrations, now is not the time to point fingers and blame. Now is not the time, but it is the time to inspire others and involve ourselves. So I always say to myself every day, what can I do to inspire others and involve others? So I ask you to say, what can you do to inspire others and involve others? I am inspired by the number of community activists and volunteers who strive daily to promote efforts going on in this city. Let's just take what just happened last weekend, ceasefire, which they do on a quarterly basis. They represent those determined to turn pain into power, tragedy into triumph, and chaos into change. They're a portion of the solution and should inspire us all to realize that we, too, are the solution. I am noted also and always say we have to connect the dots. What do I mean by we have to connect the dots? I still believe in this. But what are we doing to really connect the dots? Let's look at the infrastructure of this great city. We have great institutions. We have agencies at the federal, state, local level. We have faith-based institutions. We have pan holistic organizations. We have students, parents, guardians, teachers, employers, institutions of learning, medical institutions. I can go on and on and on. All have a part to play and revitalizing and reversing the hemorrhage that we are facing here in this city. We are a city of neighborhoods, and we have anchor institutions like schools, like University of Baltimore and other schools, places of worship, as I said, medical facilities and government agencies. Each institution should be a part. And this is where I talk about solution-oriented results, because we can talk, and I can talk and talk and talk, but I also believe that we have to have an action plan and we have to connect those dots between all the great infrastructures of institutions and people in this city. But how do we connect to resolve some of the problems that we face as relates to youth violence, as relates to drug addiction and so many ills that we face and just right up the street from this great college, somebody laying on the street right between 83 before coming on to Mount Vernon or Mount Royal. Each institution should be a part of a parent, guardian, oriented action plan that addresses core issues that impact youth violence prevention, social economic mobility and education. Residents want and need to trust those in charge to serve their best interests. This isn't accomplished by lip service alone, but by solidifying real relationships at the neighborhood level People to people, that's how we make the difference. Now I talked about a young man 
who died, number 289. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. I went to Northwestern High School, which is about to close, and I met a young man after the graduation. And after the graduation, I, and the reason why I stopped him is because he had on a shirt and tie. And I said to the young man, congratulations, are you excited about graduating from high school? What are your plans? Now, mind you, this graduation was off the hook, so I identified with him because he had a shirt and tie on. And he looked at me, and he was dumbfounded. So what's your plans? I said. He says, I have no plans. I said, how do you graduate from high school with no plans? So I begin to ask questions as I do. I don't care who it is that I run into when I'm moving around in this city. And I said, so what do you like to do? And he says, I like constructions. I like to put up sheetrock. I like to paint. I said, so are you in a training program? He said, no. I said, where do you live? He says, I live in Park Heights. My father's raising me. My mother's an a drug addict. I said, this is your lucky day. I said, I'm going to give you my card. You give me your resume. He says, I don't have a resume. I said, how do you graduate from high school with a degree, no resume, no plan of action? So I said, call. He went back to school the next day. His teacher helped him with a resume. He contacted me. I couldn't guarantee anything, but I said, I will contact contractors to see if I can get you an internship. He said, he thanked me, he sent me his resume, he got an interview. One of the contractors said, I will bring you on as a intern if you go through a um, jump start, which is a pre-apprenticeship program. He went through the program, he graduated, he invited me to the graduation, he began to apply for jobs. He's now working for one of the contractors who are building some of the new schools making $21 an hour. Now, mind you, how do we connect? It was only because he had a shirt and tie on. Because I had a headache when I left that graduation. He had no plan. And so we had the responsibility as individuals to really connect and inspire. And, it not, and it's not because of who I was, but because of how I knew that he could make a difference in his life. And so I shared the two stories of one young man in, in Park Heights, who's number 289, who's murdered and dead, and then this young man who's now making a difference in his life. So we are a city of neighborhoods, and as I said, we have anchors and institutions. Each institution should work with our parents and guardians and each other to come up with an action plan, just like this young man did. I helped him to put together an action plan to address the core issues that impact youth, violence, social economic mobility, and education. Residents want and need to trust those in charge. This isn't accomplished again by lip service, but people who are inspired create their own destiny. So I ask you to say it with me again in your mind or in the audience. Inspire others, involve ourselves. We need robust infrastructures in place that allow residents to get involved be it mentoring, volunteering at a community-based project, neighborhood cleanups, et cetera, opportunities that involve residents, create opportunities to build communities. As I attend various events throughout the city, I am often confronted by young men and women who tell me how important it is to lobby for criminal justice reform. As I stare in their eyes and I listen to horror stories, I see young men and women living without hope. Hopelessness can lead anyone down a dark path for some. It leads a life of crime and violence. For others, it leads to apathy. I believe there is no better time to address the real need of criminal justice reform than now. We need to listen and involve ourselves in the voices of those who remain voiceless. They are telling us what they need. The streets of Baltimore are crying out, and I wonder who among us is really listening. If you're listening, take a moment and think about where you can get involved and the part you can play in addressing this culture of violence. As we approach this holiday season, I hope we can come together as a city and create a way to work together to stop the hemorrhaging start the healing and create hope for our city in the future. And so I have a thought, I have a concept. 
We are Baltimore for peace. We need to, I am going to challenge that all the faith-based institutions in this city come together and begin to pray. Peace starts with choosing faith instead of hopelessness. I'm asking community organizations to plan at least one activity for those focused in the Baltimore for peace. Be a human chain, a community conversation on peace or walk to promote peace in your neighborhood. It's your turn for Baltimore. Higher learning institutions, our local colleges and universities in Baltimore, our students represent some of the greatest minds in this city and in this country. I'm asking that you extend the opportunity to a community organization to host a result-oriented forum or host a nearby high school for a tour. It's your city too. We need to push for a real vision for Baltimore. We can come up with themes, we can come up with ideas, but if we constantly reinforce the peace that is needed amongst us, I believe and I truly think that we can make the difference. We need to restore a sense of hope in most challenging communities. We need to have economic empowerment, not just economic development. And through all of this and connecting the dots, as I said earlier, we need to create mental health resources that are going to help each other. Now, in closing, I give you the challenge as you leave here and as you listen, that we begin to focus on result-oriented efforts that's going to help us to create a real Baltimore and a Baltimore that we can say is about peace, is about involvement, and it is about really making the kind of difference that can change people's lives. Just like the little conversation I had with the young man after the graduation because they had on a shirt and tie. When I went into the bank two weeks ago and I was leaving the gym and I was behind this young man, I was kind of listening to his conversation and I began to ask him questions and he didn't know who I was. I had on a cap and my workout clothes and he was trying to figure out why is this lady asking me questions? And he worked for Federal Express and I said to him, did you know that they had a franchise program that you could actually start your own franchise with Federal Express? And when he left there, he still didn't know who I was. And then he realized somebody leaving the bank, bringing up my name, said who I was. But see how you connect the dots? It's just a matter of having that kind of conversation that we need to have with each other. So in closing, I challenge you to be inspired to touch someone, to involve yourself if you're not currently involved in something, no matter what it is, to help to make a difference. Because one by one, block by block, person by person, I know we can be the great city that we are. Thank you.